Welcome everyone to the Unavailable Father series, episode four. So today we're going to be talking about the unreliable father. <clears throat> so <clears throat> last week we had um, a guest and he was talking about his substance abusing father. And today we have another guest with us who is talking about his um, unreliable father. So, like I say in the first episode, uh, an unreliable father are those fathers who are simply unreliable and they cannot be relied to at all. It could be in different um, areas, maybe emotionally or financially. And you may find that these fathers also, they prefer spending more time with their friends than spending time with their children. So today with me, I have God's Will. He's going to be sharing his story. So welcome, God's Will. Hello. Hi. Uh, would you please um, just tell us a little bit about yourself so that, our, uh, you know, the people who are on the live, they get to know you are in all. Okay. Well, my name is Igwe Shugo. My name is Igwe Shugo. I'm from Nigeria. Uh, Imo State, precisely. I'm member by tribe. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm into uh, interior decoration. Um, no. I'm glad to be in this session of our label father. I would love to share my story, my perspective about it, and I hope it will help the audience listening. Okay, it's all right. Uh, Gotu, I'm just going to ask you to speak a little bit louder so that okay. uh, I can, can hear you. I don't know if, you know, the people who are watching uh, if they can hear you as well. So just try right, to sorry. speak. Okay. So um, in what way was your father unreliable or is your father unreliable? Um, well, right from my childhood, my, right from my childhood, my father has not always been around. Yeah. Okay. Um, has not always been around. He... He's not that kind of person that is close to his children, to his family. You know, even when he's around, he's always locked in his room. You understand? He doesn't have that kind of like emotional association, or uh, he doesn't associate with us regularly, like the way a normal family, a normal father should. You know, right from when I was small. Oh, okay. Apart from. Okay, people are saying the volume yeah. is low. Okay, do you have ear low. do you have earphones? Yeah, I have my earphones. Yeah, I think you can connect earphones. Is this okay? Can you hear me? Yes, I can you hear me well. Yes, I can, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so you were okay. saying, um, your father, you say uh, your father is uh, he's never been around and he doesn't spend time with his children. What else? No, no, no he doesn't spend time. Apart from work related and uh, factors, you know, he's a federal government worker and at times he gets posted far away from where we reside, from the states we reside, maybe in the north. Since you stay we are staying in the eastern part of Nigeria. And uh, I think then he was posted far in the north, you know, for work for over nine years and or even when he's out home, although he locks himself pretty much in his room, you know, only talks to us when it is very, very important. There's no you know fun association with him. There's no fatherly, you know, relationship with his children and with his family. 
he eats alone and he watches the television alone you know what the only thing he does for us is also support us you understand like when it comes to financial as financial aspects you know in our education in health in our health our well-being he does that pretty well but when we're talking about fatherly presence fatherly emotion you know that love that you expect from your father like when i go to my friends place i see their father talk with them relate with them you know i feel a bit envy you know or jealous i wish that my father could relate with us that way so that's how it has been even till now okay uh Okay, I'm sorry that uh, you you like you and you you get to not spend time with your father and like you say that you know when you see your friends hanging out with their fathers you envy them. So yeah. can you is your father someone who prefers to spend time with his friends and not spend time with you guys? What can you say about that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say that he's someone that spends a lot of time with his friends. And he doesn't really spend much time with us. He prefers to hang out with his friends and talk about whatever that is going on in his life, talk about his plans and all with his friends. Mm-hmm. He's that kind of person. I would say yes, he is. He's this kind of person that spends a lot of time with his friends than with his family. Okay, so how does this make you feel? Knowing that he doesn't spend time with his friends, he doesn't spend time with his children. Like you said, he prefers watching TV alone. He prefers eating alone. He doesn't want to eat with you guys. How does that yes. make you feel? Mm, to be honest with you, it doesn't make me feel, you know, it doesn't make me feel normal. It, doesn't. it makes things a, a whole lot of different, you understand? It makes things very complicated for me and for my siblings also. Mm, uh, uh, I can't say I grew up in a, in a in an average family average home because of the way things are i would say it's a little bit dysfunctional you know mm-hmm. so it makes me feel a bit insecure it has affected me over the years and uh, i've always prayed about it you know and i've always hoped that things were different mm-hmm. okay so you say it doesn't uh, make you feel normal, and you've you've, you've mentioned that it has affected you and it has made you feel insecure. So, yes. the way it affected you, you say it has made you feel insecure and you feel like not normal. In what other yes. ways has it affected you? Can you tell me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think. That's why I think I find it. I uh, find myself asking myself, "Why, well, my, why do I take things very serious at times? Things that you know, my colleagues or my friends take lightly. I see myself taking things a bit too serious, you know, because it has made me very emotional. Like I say, uh, I, I, how I get to read." meaning into certain things that are unnecessary and on things I shouldn't take I shouldn't take quite serious. I should just laugh over it or just you know I also it makes me feel like I feel like people try to take advantage of me, you know because I find myself trying to please to others more often. As I will say, I'm a people please about because of the because of the decision I've made a while back. You know, that to tell myself I want to do this right. I want to see if I can make things right for myself. And uh, at the time, I just try to please people. You know, and 
At times, I feel that I can control every situation. You know, but it's not always like that. So when I see myself not controlling that situation, when it's not going the way I want it to go, I feel my, I see myself being depressed and and uh, there's a whole of anxiety. You understand? So it affected me negatively in a way. Even my relationship also, you know, it affected me. Oh, okay. I was about to ask. Uh, I actually have a question that I wanted to ask you on relationships. So before we go there, okay. you said uh, you, it affected you emotionally. You also say that uh, yeah. you've become a people pleaser, and you feel like people take advantage of you. So, like, uh, what what have you done to? You know, to, you've realized that you know it has affected you in this way. Is there anything that you've tried to do to solve it? Um. Okay. I have tried to seek help, you no know, professional help. You know. Okay. Then I've also tried to. You know, sit back, you know, adjust my behavior, adjust the way I think, yeah. then try to look for a mentor, someone I can look up to, someone that I feel that things are pretty okay to him, and I feel like I can emulate, you know, and you see someone that his lifestyle actually suits what I want, you understand? So, a mentor. I've tried seeking help from mentors, you know. And I've read books uh, relating to such issues and all. Or well, most importantly, what has actually helped me a lot is seeking a professional help, like a psychologist to that I can talk to and relate to. You understand? Know, that can lead me to the right path and tell me what to do. And how I can go about about my feeling. So it's helping me out right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. So you talked about uh you mentioned about relationships. You said you've had issues in your relationships. So my question is like have you ever had any difficulties in relationships, not just romantic relationships, but also yeah. with you know, just people around you. Yes. And what yes. is that you have faced? Yes. I, I find it difficult to trust people. You know, it's not as if it's a bad thing uh, in a way, but I think it's a bit much for me on the other side. I always think of the negative aspect now because I feel that. You might want to take advantage of me. I have that, you know, insecurity. That okay. You might want to take advantage of me. So I don't easily trust people. You understand? It's a face my relationship with people. You understand? Because I okay. seem to disagree with whatever um, idea or passion that they take at the time. Then I read meaning a lot into so many things. You understand? Which I shouldn't. Then I it has made me in, um, a bit secluded. Long, um, because, um, most times I don't socialize. You understand? I don't socialize. I'm always I keep to myself a lot. So it has affected me in such a way that I don't have confidence in myself. And I have that confidence to relate with others and to trust people. Okay. So, so you say you find it very difficult to trust people, and yes. you, you feel like people take advantage of you. So for you, yeah. you 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 ended up not socializing a lot. You keep to yourself. So yes, because of you not um spending so much time with your father and him not being emotionally unavailable. Can you say it's coming from that? 
Yeah, it is. It's coming from that. It is. Most okay, so... times it comes from that. Okay. Okay, so the the trust issues and you feeling like people are taking advantage of you, does it also happen in romantic relationships? Yeah, very much. Yeah. Does affect me in my romantic relationship? I seem to judge a lot and uh, I don't know how to put it in a way though, but I'm trying to look for a word to use to express the way I feel about it, but no, I can't actually get a word, but it has really affected me in my romantic relationship. Like, I know at times I get, I try to blame it on on my partner, but I know that most times it comes from me. You understand? I have that feeling myself that I'm broken. You understand? I'm broken. And at times I let them know that, yes, I'm broken in a way. I'm a bit difficult. I'm difficult in a way. You understand? Uh, I don't see myself as being normal. So, most times, my relationships are always hard. You know, I have this, you know, desire to to have a kind of family that I've always wanted. A, a family that I can relate with my spouse happily, relate with my children. You know, give them what I've, give them the kind of relationship I don't have with my father. You understand? So I always wanted that, and I, in all my relationship, I try to see if I could, you know, portray it in a way that it will be of the best, the way I want it for myself, or it doesn't come out that way, you understand? Maybe because of the trust issues I have, and because of the difficulty how difficult it how difficult it is for me to rely on someone and the insecurity of that person taking advantage of me and all so it has always affected my relationship uh, i'm I'm very sorry about that so basically it's you're talking about how you know you you you'd want to you know give your your family or your children you know a a relation you'd want to have your a relationship with your children and your family yes the one what am i saying i'm sorry about that okay what i'm trying to say is you meant you mentioned that you want to have a good relationship with your children you don't want to be like your father so do you have any fears that uh you know that that you grew up with that came from the fact that you grew up with an unreliable father if fears that came out that's fears that resulted to the father i grew up with an unreliable father hello you said can you, can you hear me quick? can you repeat it okay you were talking about relationships right and you said um you're talking about relationships, right? And you said it has affected you a, a lot and that you hope that one day you'll be able to have a good relationship with, you know, your family and your children and everything, right? So I'm saying it, that you have a fear that you might end up being like your father. Yeah. So I'm saying if you have any fears that you grew up with that came from the fact that you have an unreliable father. Yes, yes, yes. I have like every day of, what my, my, every of my life. Is... I, you have something to say? You have something to say? You are saying yeah, something? Yeah, I, I said, uh, what are the fears? Can you, can you explain? Okay. Like, I have a constant fear. Um, I have a constant fear that I might end up being like my father. Okay. Or even worse than him. Um, 
Okay. Don't buy that. Don't buy that. Don't buy that. Don't buy that. Can you put your mouthpiece again? Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Now I can hear you. Uh, I have that constant fear that I might end up being like him or behaving like him. You know? uh-huh. so, and I have, I always hope that it won't be that way. Okay. You know? I see myself exhibiting certain characters that I am really not impressed about. I see myself exhibiting characters that he exhibits to okay. understand and I've asked myself questions why my father behaves the way he behaves maybe this time maybe because he didn't grow up having a father his father died when he was very young you understand okay. so I've asked myself so many questions and ways in which I can you know avoid Myself um, having such, doing such a thing to my family, to my children too. So such fears, are, such fears I exhibit at times is, you know, I see myself locking myself in my room most times. You no, know, I don't hardly interact with my siblings whenever I'm having issues instead of coming out to discuss my problem or relating with my family about my issues I find it most suitable to lock myself in my room and you know relate on it by myself and uh, which actually you know discusses me and I don't really like that and um I'm coming in again with uh, the insecurity of not trusting anybody. You understand? Okay. Uh, I feel that I should learn to, you know, relate with people more. You know, give them a little bit of, you know, reliability. At least confide in them a little bit more. You understand? So okay. these are the things that. I'm afraid of that could lead that could lead to me exhibiting such you know characters my father exhibits towards us. Um, oops. Okay. So it's a Hello? you you grew up watching your father and you didn't like you know the way he he act, acted and still acts. you don't like the way he acts even up to now. But now it's like you 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 see yourself having similar traits like your father's, and you yeah. feel like you might end up being like him because of that. Because you, you earlier you mentioned that he locks himself up in his bedroom, he eats alone, he watches TV alone, he doesn't interact with you, and then you said you also find yourself locking yourself up in your room yeah. and yeah. interacting with siblings. Mm-hmm. And yes. now you you have developed that fear that you might end up becoming like your father. Yes, yes. There's yes. Something interesting that you mentioned. You say that uh, you know your father did not have a father himself. So do you think that maybe his behavior and his actions are coming from the fact that he grew up without a father? Yes, positively, because I can't think of any other explanation. You understand? I can't think of any other explanation. If you ask me, that's actually the reason. If there's any other reason, I can say no. So to me, that's the perfect. That's the perfect excuse I can give to myself. That's why he behaves the way he behaves towards his family. Okay. It's more like there's a a pattern or a trend. He grew up without a father. I don't know what happened to him when he was growing up. But now it's on you now that you you probably need to work on yourself so that you don't 
becoming like him because yeah. you said the self similar trait. So I think it's something that you need to work on yourself. You mentioned that you have a you you have been going for therapy and you mentioned that you have a psychologist and you mentioned that uh, you know you're looking for a mentor and all. I think it's important yes. that address that as well so that when you have your children they don't get to experience that as well so in a way it's not his fault that he is the way he is because for him he didn't grow up without a father he he, he grew up grew up without a father right and okay. now well, you're experiencing the effects of not having a father okay. right yeah okay so I, I asked you this question, like, have you ever tried to work on the people-pleasing, uh, your, your people-pleasing problem? And you told me about, uh, you know, how you you have a psychologist and, you know, you're going for therapy and all. So what can you say to people who are having the same issues as yours? What can you tell them, people out there and the people who are listening? Oh, okay. First of all, it's about your mindset. You mm -hmm. should have that decision that you don't want to end up like this. You want something different for yourself. Then if you've made that decision, I think that's the major step towards a better change. Then secondly, then you look for solutions in which you can you know, try and change and adjust the kind of lifestyle you want. You know, there are people out there who can help you. That's true. For instance, looking and look and again looking for a mentor. The mentor does actually have to be a pastor or someone very influential in the society. It can it should be someone that you think that the lifestyle suits you. This is what you want to. This is what you actually want to be this is the kind of person that you're looking forward to you understand someone that you can emulate you understand it can be an elder brother it can be a family friend or an uncle you know that you respect so much and you admire the way he does his things the way he handles his family and all so look for someone that is you can emulate someone that can talk to you and you know advise and things you need to do. Then again, try and work on yourself. That it those things that you, see, you tend that uh, is actually affecting you negatively. Avoid them. You know, like most times I said I when I'm. At times I lock myself in my room, you know, when I'm angry or when I'm depressed or when I feel bothered. It's sort of coming out to, you know, relate to my family or relate to someone about my issues. And that's not going, that's not helping the situation. You understand? So, what you, should, what you need to do is to just try and come out, try and look for someone I can confide in, talk to the person. To the person know that this is the issue you're facing. You know? And uh, again, pray. You know, there's no other person that you need someone that you need a supernatural being that can help you, and that is God. You understand? So pray and talk to God about it, discuss your issues with Him, uh, and He will help and guide us towards the change that we want. What is it? All right. Thank you very much for you know sharing all those points. Someone said uh, in the comment section, it's admirable that you want to break the cycle. Yes. Yes. So you should definitely break the cycle. And thank you very I... much for coming. Thank you very much for coming out today and sharing your story. It's not everyone who, who has the guts and the strength to come and share their story, especially guys. And I'm actually happy that today we got to hear, um, you know, uh, male's perspective. Like we got to hear a guy's side, 
we we had two females who were talking about you know the the effects of having an unavailable father and today you came and you also spoke how it affected you as well and i'm just realizing that you know these effects they are almost similar in a way the people pleasing you know having trust issues you know all that and i think with you now because you are a man you have you, you get to worry about how you're going to handle your family how you're yeah. going to teach your children considering that you've always been with a father who's been um unreliable so the pressure is more on you because for you you, you you're going to find someone to marry and you're going to have children as well and you'd want to be a good father and you'd want to have that kind of relationship with your children that you don't have with your father. So thank you very much Coatswell, for coming today and sharing. And to our viewers, thank you very much for joining in. Uh, Tafadwa and Memory, thank you very much, you guys. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you very much. It's a privilege to be in this session. It took me a lot of courage to, it took me a lot of courage to you know, make up my mind to, to come for this interview. For this session, I was yeah. serious, like I thought about it. I even wanted to change my mind. I wanted to tell you, but I also let me see. It's better I just come out um because I know there are people out there who are going through the same issue I am. So why not? I'm an adult, so it's better I come out and discuss my problems with them. Let them know that there is a way that you can change the situation and leave the kind of. Admirable life that you want. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay.